Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner's Code. Today we are going to learn how we can use Flask, Ajax and JavaScript to create a daily journal that allows us to log information based around specific dates using CRUD capabilities. Okay, so I've created a folder called Daily Journal and I've CD'd into it in my terminal and also opened it in Visual Studio Code. We're going to set up our virtual environment. So we're going to use the uh, VEMV, we'll say Python, 3-m venv and then we'll just call it my emv you can call it whatever you like but for this purpose we're just going to call it my emv and we're going to say source my emv bin activate and now that we have this active we're just going to install uh, flask so we'll say pip3 install flask and we'll let that do its thing then we'll come over to here and we're just going to create a templates folder and a static folder. And then inside the templates, we will have an index.html. And then inside the static, we will have a scripts.js. Actually, we call it app.js. And then a styles.css. We might not need the styles, but we'll have it just in case. Um, and then we will also create an app.py. And this is just going to hold all of the Flask logic. So to start with, we'll make sure that everything is installed correctly. I'm just gonna create a HTML5 boilerplate and we'll change this to say daily journal. And then we are going to actually link to a couple of things. So the first thing that we will need to link to is our styles.css. So here we're gonna say URL four, and then we'll say static and file name will be styles.css, so that will match what we have up here. Um, we then want to link to Tailwind, so we're going to say script, and then here we'll create a source tag, and then we're just going to link to CDN for tailwindcss.com, um, and that should import all of Tailwind minified. Um, so next we will take another script tag and we're just going to get jQuery. Um, so HTTPS and then code.jQuery.com and then we will get the 3.6.0 minified version. And then here we're just going to create a class and we'll say bggray100 and we will say leading normal and tracking normal. And this is just letter spacing and line height, just to make sure that everything is consistent. Um, and then here we'll just create a heading one that says daily journal. And now if we come over to our, the bottom, so outside of the um, body tag, we wanna link to our app.js, sorry, inside the body tag. So here we will create another script and this is going to have a source for URL4. And we'll do the URL for the static folder. And then we'll say file name is equal to app.js. Now, if we come over to here and we make sure that we have um, jQuery installed correctly, we can actually create a document ready function. And then in here, we'll just say console log, hello. And we will make the heading one red, just in case, just in case we need to actually use the styles.css, it's good to make sure that it's all linked up. So now we can actually get started with making sure that Flask is installed correctly and we can get a development environment sorted. So we'll say from Flask, import Flask, render template, JSONify, and request. And then we're just gonna create a new instance of Flask, and we'll set that equal to the variable of app. And here we're just gonna to to say app.root. So this is a decorator for the forward slash root. And then we will say def index, and we're just gonna return render template for index.html. 
And then at the bottom we'll say if name is double equal to main. So if it's the main file that's being run, then we will say app.run and then passing debug equal to true, if I can spell. So now that we have this created, this is the most basic um, development environment that we can create. Um, so we'll say Python 3 um, and then app.py. And now we should have a development environment here. So if we open this, um, it's, as you can see, there are a couple of errors here and one of them is pointing to this URL 4. It's because the closing bracket needs to actually close around that. So if we come back to here and then we close the bracket for the URL 4 function, so we have static and file name passed in as two parameters, and then we do the same here. And then if we save and come back to terminal, and then if we just cancel this and run it again, and then we open this. If I bring this over to here, we have this installed is Tailwind working. So we have letter spacing, line height, and then a background color. So we have things installed and it's working correctly. So now if we come back over to our um, app.py, we can start creating the logic for all of this. So now, what we actually want to do is at the very, very top, we just want to create a couple of variables that is going to hold the data. So first, just because we're going to simulate the data storage, we're not going to store it to a file and we're not going to store it to a database. So we're just going to create a journal entries and that's going to be an empty list. So when it's first run, it's an empty list and we are going to create next ID and that's going to be the first entry basically. And every time we will increment this by one. So our app.root for the index is fine as it is. We don't need to be doing anything to that, but we will be creating a new root for the forward slash journal. And this is basically going to allow us to create a new entry. So we'll create a method for this and it's going to be post. And we'll say def create underscore entry and we're going to get the next ID from up here. So we'll say global next ID. And then we'll say data is equal to request got dot get JSON. And then we're going to say new entry is equal to a dictionary. And we'll say ID is next ID. Um, date is data and then we are going to get the date from the data that's passed in and then we'll say content data content and these are both uh, variables that can be passed in using ajax so now after we have our new entry we are going to append it to this list that we've created up here so we'll say journal entries dot append and then new entry and then we'll increment the next ID by one so that we have set this to one and then the next time we run this it will be two and then it will be three. So we increment after so that the very first instance is the number one. And then we're just going to return JSONify new entry and we will pass in 201 just so it's, it's a successful um, return. Next we need to create a put entry and this is basically going to allow us to update what we have already created. So we'll create a root, so app.root, we'll say full slash journal and then we need the entry ID so we're going to say integer and then entry ID and then we need to create a put method um, and then we'll create a function called update entry and this is going to take in a parameter of entry ID. And then we'll say data, dot, uh, data is equal to request.getjson. And then we're going to say for entry in journal entries. So for the all the entries that we've got stored in here, we're going to loop through. And we'll say if entry ID is double equal to the entry ID that's passed in, then we're going to get 
the entry date and we're going to reassign that to be the data that we've just been passed through and we're going to get the date and we're going to get the entry date and then we're going to say entry content and this is going to be data.get and then we'll pass in content and then we're going to get the entry content and this is just going to reassign these data uh, these variables inside the dictionary to be what these are here next we're going to return jsonify and then the entry that we have because we've re we've updated it so now we can pass it back to the front end and then outside of this so outside of the for loop we will say return jsonify and then this is just going to be an error and we'll say entry not found and 404 so because there is no entry found in the journal entries then we're going to return a 404 error now we need a way of deleting so we'll say app.root and then we're going to pass in journal and then we'll need another integer so this is going to be entry id again and then we'll say methods is equal to delete and then we'll say def delete entry and we obviously need the entry id being passed in again so that we can pass it to the root and we're going to say global journal entries because we need to get the journal entries and then we're going to say journal entries is equal to and we're going to create a list using list comprehension so we'll say entry for entry in journal entries if the entry id is not equal to the entry id that's passed in so for every single journal for every single entry that's in the journal entries if the entry id is number one and we are we've gone to the root of journal forward slash one then we are going to reassign it to make sure that that number one is ignored so if we've got three entries one two and three here we will get number two and three if we've gone journal forward slash one and then we're going to return jsonify and this is just going to be a message saying entry deleted and then a 200 status code for everything being done so now we can head over to our index.html and we can start actually building the layout for this so inside the body we'll create a div this is going to have a class of container and then mx auto and p6 and we'll move this down so that the heading one is inside the container and we'll just create or give this heading one a couple of classes so we'll say text to excel font semi bold text gray 700 and we'll say margin bottom of six and font uh, font bold will actually make that and we'll remove the font semi bold so now after the heading one we need to create a form so we'll have a div and we'll say background white padding of six rounded large and shadow medium and then inside this we'll create a heading 2 and this is going to have text to excel um, font semi bold text gray 700 and then margin bottom of 4 and this is just going to say add new entry if we actually make this one a little bit bigger just so that the heading one is actually bigger than the heading 2 so I've changed this to text for excel and then after the heading 2 we'll create a form that has an ID of journal dash form and we'll give it a class of space y4 so we'll just give it a little bit more padding Ooh. and then we can remove the action because we're going to handle the action using ajax and then inside the div inside the form we'll cre just create an empty di a div without any styling and then we'll say label for date and we'll give it a 
class of block for display block, text gray 600 and font medium. And then the label will just say date. And then we will say input type of date. And the name is going to be um, removed actually, because we will target the IDs when it comes to Ajax. So here we will say ID of date. And then we're just going to give it a class of width full, padding left and right of four or one rem, padding top and bottom of half a rem. We'll give it a border and then rounded large. And then on focus, we want outline of none. And then we'll say focus ring two and focus ring blue 500. And then we will also give it required so that we make sure that the user has to input a date. And then after this div, we will create another div and we're going to have exactly the same, but one is going to be for content and it's going to be a text area. So we'll have label for content. And then I'm just going to take these classes here and give them to that label just so that the labels are consistent. And then inside here, we will say content and then we'll give it, a, we'll create a text area that will have um, the ID of content. And we will say rows is equal to four and class, we'll say width full. Um, we'll actually give it the same as up here, just so that it's again, consistent. So if I paste those there, just make sure that they are all formatted correctly in terms of spacing. And then we'll also say required on this. Um, and obviously we don't need to put anything in here, but we could, for instance, put placeholder, um, but for now it's okay. And then outside of this div, we are just going to create a button that's type submit. And we'll give it a class of width full. Um, background blue 500, text of white, py2, rounded large, and then we'll give it a hover state and we'll say hover bg blue 700. And then inside this button, we are going to put add entry, and that will allow us to actually have some text inputted inside. Now we need a way to actually output the um, journal entries. So we're going to have a div with a margin top. And then inside this, we'll create another heading two, which will have text to Excel, font semi bold, text gray 700, and margin bottom of four. And we'll say your journal entries. And then we're going to create a URL that has an ID of journal list, so an unordered list. And then we'll say class space Y4. And now that is actually the layout needed for um, having our front end sorted. I'm going to make the font size a little bit bigger just so that you can see everything. Um, and if you want to get this, you can pause it here. And then I'll come over to the app.py and you can pause this as well, just in case you need everything. And now if we come over to our app.js and we know, well, I think we know that we've got the console log working. Yep, we have console log working. Um, so now if we come back to here and we remove this, if we just make sure that everything is Okay, so now that I've refreshed, we have this uh, styled much nicer. Um, we can actually start adding the Ajax to be able to post this to our journal entries list and output them below. So now inside the document ready, we're going to create a couple of functions. The first one will be load journal entries. And then we're going to say $.get, and this is going to be a get request, so we'll get the root of journal and we're going to create a function that passes back the entries of data um, and we're going to say we're going to select 
the journal list and we're just going to empty it because we don't actually need anything in it now. And then we'll say entries dot for each. And then here we're going to pass in function and we'll pass in the singular entry that we're talking about. So for each entry, we are just going to grab the one entry. So this is what's passed back from this journal list. So if we come to here and we say journals, we're returning JSONify of this new entry. So now inside of this entries for each, we can actually start populating the journal list. Although I'm confused as to why we are receiving an error here. I think it's because that should really be there. Yep, there you go. Um, so now if we target journal list and we'll say dot append and then we're going to create backticks because we're going to be using or creating our elements inside of this UL and we're going to append everything using JavaScript. So here we'll say li and we'll give it a class of flex and then justify between. And then we're going to say data dash ID is equal to, and then here we can pass in inside open close um, speech marks. We can say entry dot ID, and that's going to be the journal entries ID. And then we can close off the opening list item tag. And then we are just going to create a div that has a class of entry. And then inside of this, we'll create a strong tag that has the entry dot date and we'll close the strong tag. And then we are going to pass in the entry dot content. And then we can close the entry div and then we will create a buttons div. And this is just going to have the edit and delete functions. So we'll say button class of edit button and we're going to edit and then we'll say button class of delete button and we'll give it text red. I'm not 100% sure if these um, classes, the flex and justify between and the text red will actually pull in correctly because it's being rendered through JavaScript rather than actually HTML. Um, so it, the way Tailwind compiles, it might not actually compile these at the same time. Um, so that's why I've created the styles.css folder or file. And then here we're just going to say delete and then button. And then we can close the div and we can close the list item. So now that is our append. Um, or our load journal entries, which will happen on load. So now outside of this function, we can actually call it. So we'll say load journal entries. And now we need to handle the form submission. So we're going to target the journal form and we'll say on submit and then create a function. And then this is going to say e.prevent default and that will stop the form from submitting. Now to be able to use e, we need to pass it in as the within the function. And this is the e just represents the event, which is the form submission. Um, and then we'll say const new entry is equal to a JSON object. And we'll say date, and we're just gonna get the dates value. And then content, and we are gonna get the content value. So that will be the text, the input date field and the input content field. Now we need to have commas here because it's a JSON object. And then outside of this, but still inside the submit, we're going to say $.ajax and then we'll say URL. And this is going to be for the journal. And then method is post content type will be application JSON. 
and then data json dot stringify new entry so we're going to be passing in the new entry that we've just created above and then on success we want to create a function and this is just going to load journal entries so we will be getting all the journal entries again and outputting them and then we will say journal dash form and then we need the index of zero to actually get the form and we're just going to say dot reset and this is just going to reset or clear all of the form fields next we need to handle the edit button so we'll say doc document dot on and then we'll pass in click and now we need to pass in the edit button and because this is created using um, JavaScript this edit button isn't actually going to appear in the DOM when we load so we need to bind it to the document so this is how you bind it to the document by passing it in as a second parameter on the on click function and then here we're going to say const li is equal to this dot closest li and then we'll say const entry id is equal to li dot data and we'll get the id of it actually we'll change this to the attribute and we'll get the data id they both do the same things however using dot data sometimes only returns one or the first instance of it and obviously because we might have more than one journal entry it's better to get the specific attribute then we'll say const new date and this is going to be a prompt that says enter new date and then we'll say li.find and then we're going to find the strong and we will get the text from that strong and then we will say const new content and we are going to create a prompt again it will just say enter new content and then we'll say li.contents.filter and we are going to create a function for this that is just going to return this dot node type if it's triple equal to three i'm going to put this onto brushed lines just to make it a little bit clearer um, dot text and then dot trim so we're going to be getting the text from it and then trimming it confused as to why this is throwing an error maybe this needs to be on one line li.contents.filter ah we need the n there so the function was spelled incorrectly so now that works it's returning the node type where it's triple equal to three and then here we are just going to say if new date and new content we will create the ajax function and we're going to say url and then forward slash journal and then we're going to append onto the end of the string the entry id and we'll say method is put method content type is application json and then data will be json.stringify and then we'll pass in date and new date and then content and new content and then we'll create a success function which is going to be the same as above where we are just loading the journal entries Okay, so finally we need to do the same as this to bind the delete button and then inside of this we are just going to say const entry id is equal to this dot closest and we're going to find the closest li and we're going to get the data attribute of the id We'll say if confirm are you sure you want to delete 
this entry. And then we're just going to say $.ajax And then inside of this, we will use the URL and we'll say journal and then entry ID. I'm gonna say method will be a delete method. And then we're just gonna create a success function that will load the journal entries again. And that's just so that we can get the fresh journal entries. So now that we have everything set up and working, if we come back over to Chrome and refresh so that we have our JavaScript all linked up. Now here we will create a date and we'll choose today and we'll say daily journal made and then we'll add the entry. And we don't seem to have any output. So if we inspect, come over to the console We check the network and when I add a new entry, we should see something output. So we have journal output, which has this ID. And then we get the journal, the method not allowed. The method is not allowed for the requested URL. So the add entry, if I come back over to Visual Studio Code. The add entry is on submit. It's a post method for forward slash journal. So here we have methods post. So what it is, is we've actually missed a route. So we need to add a get route for the journal. So we'll say app dot route, and we're gonna say journal. And then here we're gonna pass in methods, and this is gonna be get. And we'll say def get entries. And then here we're just going to return a JSONify journal entries. So this will actually return all of the journal entries that we have inside of the list that we've made up here in a JSON format. So now because we are getting, we're using a get request when we first load the page, it's calling that. So now if I come back here and refresh, and then I create a new entry. So we'll say last week. We'll just set test. We now have a new entry added. And yes, as you can see, there isn't any um, styling added to these because they're rendered using JavaScript, CSS. So if we come over to our styles.css, we can add this in manually. So we'll say journal list align. I'm going to say display flex and then justify content space between, and then journal list li buttons, and then we'll target text spread, and we'll give a color of red. So now if we come back over and refresh, we now have the edit button and the delete styled. So now if we create a new one for two days ago, and we'll say, um, hit 545 subscribers and then add entry. You can now see that we have a entry added on the 16th and an entry added on the 14th. Hopefully this has helped you grasp how we can use Flask, Ajax and JavaScript to implement CRUD into a very simple application. If you learned something today, please hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to see new videos coming. Thanks and I'll see you again soon.